Eli 5 do memories occupy a physical space in the brain? Memories are pretty much connections between nerve cells, the more numerous the connections the better you can remember something. Since this is a physical connection, theoretically there is a limit to how much we can remember. However we don't know how much of our brain is available to store memories so we really can't determine what that limit is. The truth is that we aren't fully positive on how and where memories are stored, but there is a strong theory that I support. Imagine you walk into a library. You wanted to find a specific book, so you go and look on the computer and you find the location of where that book is. Now instead of having one location for the book, each page is stored in a different place, but you have the locations of every page. So you go and hunt down each page, and now you have the full book. To add another layer to this, imagine you just have a pretty solid idea of which pages are in this book and in what order they go in. Each time you find the pages and make the book, you have to later take the book apart and put the pages back. Do this enough, and things can get a bit messed up, and the book isn't really the same as it was the first time. Source, I am a neuroscientist. Yes. All memory is technically physical even with computers. I mean an electron isn't any less physical than the atom it comes from. It's not as simple as locating a sector in your hard drive and locating a file. But memories are thought to be sets of physical neurons formed and reformed over time for a specific stimuli. Removed. They're frequently called memory traces as they're more patterns of brain activity. Though the simplest form of a memory would be the connection between two neurons, as with repeated firing between them, the connection gets stronger. This is the basis for what most people believe constitutes memory and active learning. As you ride your bike down the grass hill in the same way every day, the path will first start to be obvious by the grass all laying down in the same direction after a day or two. After you keep riding down the same path on the hill, the grass will eventually carve further into the ground and make a wider path and begin the carve into the ground. Your familiar feeling with things are attributed to your memory of the things. In the same way that your bike will create a dirt path in the grass over time as you ride it again and again, the memory becomes stronger and more established the more you experience the room or event or experience. Just as the dirt path your bike makes doesn't occupy more space, but does hold the information of the path, your memory paths in your brain do not occupy more space in your brain. I forget where I saw this explained, but memories do not actually exist so much as happen. They're not like data on a hard drive, they are more like a radio signal getting picked up by an antenna. A memory occurs when nerve cells in a certain part of your brain repeat a pattern of electrochemical signals that is similar to the pattern that occurred at the moment of the event you are remembering. If something prevented you from establishing the initial pattern, you won't be able to remember a thing later, no matter how hard you try. This is why things we once knew, and forgot. We might someday remember, but you never get back the events of last night when you were too drunk to remember your own name. Technically, no. And hashtag X200B. The neurons that are able to form the memory absolutely occupy a physical space. And hashtag X200B. But each neuron only stores a part of each memory. How they connect and fire determine what memory is recalled. This process does not have any physical space. It is solely a combination of neurons, which occupy a physical a complete space, but also have multiple jobs. And hashtag X200B. Thus, each full memory you recall is a combination of neurons, each acting together to form the memory. The memory itself only exists because these neurons fired and linked in a certain pattern, removed, removed. So, neurons are connected to each other. The neurons themselves aren't really responsible for storing information. The information we know it's encoded in the connections between them. Or rather, the pattern between them that gets activated, meaning that they respond strong enough to some input to turn on, given some input. Imagine a spider web. Let's say that web represents the concept of a bicycle. If you add a small stand, but the web otherwise stays the same that probably represents something really similar, but different, than a bicycle. Maybe a unicycle or skateboard or handlebars. Add and remove strands and each pattern represents something different in this way. These webs are different for everyone, 
though there are commonalities. So, the web the activation web that means bicycle for me might not have much of anything to do with the one that named bicycle for you. So, when your eyes, ears, nervous system etc. sends signals into the brain it sort of falls through the chain of neurons activating different paths that have been conditioned to respond to that type of signal, which is why odd things sometimes remind us of seemingly unrelated stuff, because part of one web was similar to another. So, smelling eggs might remind you that forgot to hang up your car keys, as an example. This explanation is kind of contrived, but at a high level. It gives an idea of how information gets kept in our brains. Removed. Yes. Your brain, the physical container for the mind, is by definition a physical space, with its blend of electrical signals and nerve networks, its incredible growth once language in the frontal cortex exploded, all of those somehow are the physical holders of memories and their triggers, including smell, music, and more. Somehow molecules in salty water and membranes and constant lightning created. They initially were searching for these engrams, or specific places in the brain where learning could be observed. Later the neural pathways and the strengthening of these were more widely accepted. Where the principle of use it or lose it works, they could spontaneously come back. And if you're interested in this process you could read up on Hebbian learning. Very interesting stuff and hashtag X200B. Interestingly the study of taxi drivers in London have shown larger areas of the hippocampus than in normal individuals. Same with musicians with highly specific skills. So this could be some evidence for specific enlarged areas due to learning. But the chicken or the egg problem comes up here. Were the taxi drivers more prone to learn because of a larger hippocampal area or did it grow due to learning? I hold the unpopular view among people in my field, philosophy of mind, that the answer is no. Obviously, any number of physical events occur in the brain when we remember something. However, none of these things have the inherent nature of memory itself. Memories have content. They are about something and the thing that they are about is represented to the mind when memories occur. The representation has certain features such as a meaning, an intellectual acceptance of the meaning, a mode of presentation that differentiates it from other types of mental states about the same thing, and, in the case of experiential memory, any number of qualitative features of experience like what things looked like. None of these seem to be anything like anything that is happening in the brain. Patterns of synaptic activity and chemical production bear no resemblance whatsoever to a mental image of eating breakfast last Tuesday. The imagistic qualities aren't there, the about last Tuesday-ness isn't there. People in philosophy of mind have tried to explain how the features of a memory could be nothing more than the brain activity that was present when the memory occurred. No answer has received wide acceptance and all of them face serious problems. Most people in the field are sure their view must be true, so they keep trying. Some of us think this is a waste of time. You can't explain how one thing is the other because they are two different things. Mental states aren't part of the physical world because minds are distinct, non-physical part of us. Dualism about human nature has actually been the default view of human beings throughout history. You mind or soul or spirit is a part of you that is distinct from your body. It is the thing religions tell us goes to heaven or gets a new body when we die. Currently, academics look down on this view. But the view seems built into how people conceive of themselves, and the idea that thoughts have electrical wattage, memories have a certain number of proteins, or wishes take place and squishy gray stuff still sounds confused and ridiculous to the UN indoctrinated, they would say uninformed, here. So, I stand with the unwashed masses in saying the correct answer to your question is no. There's not a proverbial neuron cell like a book on a shelf. The brain organizes memory holographically. Aren't most of our memories false, or rather, biased toward our perception? Think of it less of a filing cabinet and more of a branching path in a forest, and new memories are the discoveries of new sections of the forest, so it isn't like our brains start physically empty, but instead, just like a forest, it's always there, but we haven't discovered it, it lies dormant. The memory isn't so much the destination of walking on these paths, but the walks themselves, with the trees and bushes you pass by are the details of a memory, 
seeming vivid as you look at them, but fade from your mind over time. Tangent thoughts branch off the path you're currently walking on, starting similar, but changing over time, as you walk further away from where the branch forked. Things like habits or paths you walk often, and things like dementia and Alzheimer's are the inability for us to walk these paths. Music